Hello everyone and welcome to today's video by the AM Academy. My name is Sven and today I want to talk about the Race 3D E2 printer. The E2 is a powerful desktop FFF printer designed to bring you the highest quality parts. It is considerably more expensive than your single nozzle RepRap printer, but it also packs a much bigger punch. It is absolutely stuffed with awesome features and makes for a smooth and easy printing experience, yielding exceptional parts in no time. We'll go over them in more detail, but among them are automated bed leveling, the IDEX technology, and filament runout sensors, along with print recovery after power loss, a HEPA filter, and more. Now, where do I begin? The outside frame is made of aluminum sheets, giving it a nice solid feel without making it so heavy that your desk will buckle under the weight. The front and top doors are mostly plastic with plexiglass windows, so you can easily monitor your print process. You load your printer using the doors on the side. Each side has a door, one for each of the nozzles and the printer. There are little rollers on the bottom to allow the spool to unwind easily. I just kind of wish they had added a tube pass through to the doors. The way it is now, if you want to use a spool that doesn't fit into this little loading bay, or you are printing from a dry box, you need to leave the door open, which just doesn't look very nice. I don't think it would have been too difficult to add a little hole with some rubber to allow for filament to pass through the door. Nonetheless, as long as your spool does fit, it is a neat way of storing the material inside the machine that doesn't take up any additional space. Much better than the standard system on the Ultimaker S5, for example, where constantly having to reach around the machine or turn it around becomes a real pain real fast. In terms of movement, the printer features two independent extruders each with one nozzle. This is the IDEX system I mentioned earlier, and I'll get to why that's cool later on. These two print heads sit on a crossbar that can be raised or lowered using two separate stepper motors with long screws here on the left and right. That covers the X and Z axis movement, and the print bed itself moves back and forth to allow for Y movement. You may already have noticed that the filament loading bays from earlier obstruct quite a bit of the view inside the printer and they can be a bit annoying if you're really trying to get at the back area of the printer in order to clean it, but normally this is absolutely no issue. Way in the back there, you can see the HEPA filter. Since the build volume can be entirely closed once I close the top and front doors, you can eliminate any potentially harmful particles leaving your printer, fulfilling EU regulations. If the power goes out during your print, absolutely no problem. The printer can recover from a power loss without pausing a beat. Well, it pauses while the power is at whatever. This can save time, money, and effort, and eliminate a lot of frustration if your coworker turns off the power strip or simply unplugs your printer. Hey! Can't you see that I'm printing? Don't worry about it, just uh, okay. Plug it back in. Sorry. Next up is the filament runout sensors. They're basically built into the loading bays, making them a bit difficult to access. But you never need to unless, well, you're trying to show them like I am right now. They are optical sensors, sensing if there is something blocking the line of sight, such as filament, and as long as there is, everything is great. But if you frequently use transparent or very see-through filament, this can lead to issues with the sensor claiming that the filament is empty when it isn't really at all. You can disable the filament runout sensor in the settings, just try and remember to re-enable it, or you might run into a partially finished print sooner or later. I also love the power saving button they have that you can use to put the display and internal LED lights to sleep when they are not necessary. The printer also has an emergency stop feature when either of the doors are opened. This could be useful if you are running the printer in a house with kids around, but generally I just keep the setting off. As for connectivity, you can connect the printer to your network using a Cat5e cable on the back, connect it to your wireless network using the settings, or use a USB stick to transfer your parts to the machine. My favorite way is the wireless connection, allowing me to upload G-code directly to the machine from the slicer as long as I am in the same wireless network, and then using the Raise Cloud web interface or the app on my phone to monitor my prints in real time. The auto bed leveling guarantees a perfect print result without any issues every time. 
A probe on the left print head measures the print bed before each print, mapping the offsets of different areas and then compensating for this offset during printing. The probe only measures the area necessary for the print job rather than the entire print bed every time. Of course, there are limits to this technology. So there is an assisted leveling process built into the machine. The probe measures the print bed offsets and then provides you with a color-coded diagram of the flatness across the bed, allowing for easy adjustment of the relevant screws. This makes bed leveling and calibration a very quick and painless process. If you're interested in the exact steps necessary, check out this video right here to learn more about it. We will also have the link down in the description below the video. The rest of the, of the calibration steps, such as nozzle offsets in Z, X, and Y direction, are integrated into a nice instruction manual where the printer guides you through the intuitive steps with video instructions on the screen at all times to illustrate each of the processes. The print bed is made of flexible steel, meaning that removing larger prints is as easy as flexing the build plate once. The build tech surface itself is good for a multitude of prints before needing replacement. Other build plates could be used, but the E2 only has magnets to keep the build plate in place, making glass or other materials a bit more difficult to use. Last, but certainly not least, we get to the IDEX system. IDEX stands for Independent Dual Extrusion and allows for a few really neat tricks. Basically, the IDEX system can function like any other dual nozzle printers using two different materials such as ABS and HIPS, or PLA and BVOH to build a model with support structures easily and painlessly. But due to the independent nature of the printhead's movement, IDEX printers have two additional modes of operation, mirror and duplication mode. In both of these, the prepared part is printed simultaneously by each one of the printheads. This means that after the same amount of time, you suddenly now have two parts, either two identical ones if you use duplication mode, or, well, a mirrored version as the name mirror mode would suggest. The productivity and speed boost this can provide is self-explanatory. So, this should give you a good overview over the Race 3D E2 printer. While it is indeed pricier than the entry-level printers you often see in the desktop market, it is also brimming with cool and useful features, making your life much easier. I hope I answered any questions you may have had and that you liked this video. If you do have any further questions or comments, please leave them below. And if you did enjoy my overview, then consider subscribing for more content around 3D printers and scanners in the future. Thank you for watching, and have a great day. I'll see you next time.